thank you very much for joining. We really appreciate you taking the time, wherever you're, wherever you're viewing this from. I hope you're safe, your families are safe, and your colleagues are, uh, are safe, and that the very, to the very best degree you can, you're still managing to maintain some type of business as usual. That, that's a, a fairly major theme of the, of the webinar today about how digital solutions, in particular those provided by, you know, not surprisingly us, because it's a, um, a viewpoint which we've got very close evidence of the benefits being delivered, uh, are able to make a difference in these strange times to the lives of residents and, and also for housing providers and, and for their colleagues and staff. So we prepared a few slides and there are some very, very short videos which uh, we'll explain as we go through. Over and all, it's, it's perhaps 10, 15 minutes or so of presentation and then some question and answer. Uh, I'm Tim Barclay by way of introduction. I'm the CEO of Apello. I'm joined on the bridge uh, video by some of my colleagues. I'll get them to introduce themselves while I key up the slides. So Carl, over to you first. Yeah, hi, uh, I'm Carl Mickey. I'm the CTO for Apello. Hi all, I'm Ian Hawkins, Head of Marketing at Apello. I'm Mark Stratford, Commercial Director at Apello. Great stuff. Hopefully everybody can at this stage see the screen. Guy, can you guys can you all see the screen? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Great stuff. Okay. Hopefully the rest of you can as well. Uh, as I mentioned up front, the purpose of this is to try and share some of the learning that we've had from Smart Living Solutions, which is our digital telecare service, and the way that we've implemented that with our customers has given us an, a number of insights, and we, we're joined by people who have deployed it and are, are looking for insights into what else they can use it for to give their residents a better experience, as well as those people who haven't yet deployed Smart Living Solutions, but either are considering doing so or, or I guess are joining this to, to understand had they done so, or if they do do so, what type of benefits would it provide? As I mentioned up front, a relatively short period of presentation, 10 minutes or so, maybe just slightly beyond that, uh, including some, some interactive videos. There's a couple of polling questions that we'll ask, but all the way through, if you click down towards the bottom of your screen, you'll be able to see the ask a question icon. If you haven't used that before, it's very, very simple. Just click ask a question, and lo and behold, you'll have a box to be able to type into. Uh, also, if you're not a Zoom regular, you may not be aware, but up in the top right hand corner, you've got the option of selecting gallery, which means you can see not just the screen, but also some of the other presenters as well. So there are a number of different viewing choices. Hopefully this format's working for you really well. And as, as we go through, we'll try and ensure that it, it's a both informative, valuable, but, but fairly pacey session so that you don't feel like we're just talking at you. So I've explained the purpose of the presentation and uh, I've, I've mentioned that there'll be a Q&A afterwards with all four of us ready and able to answer your questions. I've explained how you load them via the ask question at icon at the bottom. So let's crack on. One of the main features about Smart Living Solutions, and, and just to step back for a moment, as a reminder for anybody who's not familiar with it, Smart Living Solutions is our modern digital replacement for the traditional analog warden call system. So it's faster, it's safer, because it's digital, it has very fast call setup times. One of the other things that's a, an inherent feature of it is it incorporates modern technology that really benefits those who are living with it. And as everybody I'm sure has experienced over this period of lockdown, the ability to use video rather than just audio calling is a real, real boom. We've seen such a spike in the use of Zoom, of Teams, of, uh, of other video meetings for business purposes, and yet typically the elderly and vulnerable, 
those who don't necessarily have the strongest mobility have largely been excluded by society from video being a means of communication. So we've incorporated it into smart living solutions and there's a lot of data points that say visual as well as just audio are pivotal to people enjoying and experiencing a high quality conversation. What we're going to just show you a very quick video now which demonstrates how simple apartment to apartment calling is on smart living solutions. Uh, there's no, there is some audio to this, but it's only music. You will be able to see the icons on the screen because this video is designed as a how-to for residents to be able to understand and house managers to be able to understand how to use some of the very simple functionality. And as you can see from this video, it's as simple as touching a couple of icons on the living hub, which is what we call the video room unit that's part of the wider smart living solution system, pressing a couple of icons and being connected in high quality digital video to another apartment. Now in this, in this example, we've used a real apartment block where real residents are in situ. Uh, it's quite a nice one as it, as it happens. It's um, one of our, one of our uh, customers has built a showcase apartment and installed smart living solutions as part of that. But you can see just a few taps of an icon lead you from the home screen to being able to choose which apartment and make a video call. Now it, kind of, it sounds kind of run of the mill to those of us who are used to systems such as Skype, such as FaceTime, but as I'm sure you'll be acutely aware, within social housing and within the retirement community, penetration of smart devices is very, very low. It's circa 25% or so, higher in some of the socioeconomic brackets, but largely in social housing, is a, is a pretty low 25%. So having something that's really simple to use, it's not complicated like trying to understand how to find particular apps on a, a smartphone or a tablet, if you're not familiar with them, it's just tapping a few icons, makes a really, really easy to use tool for the elderly and vulnerable to be able to stay in contact with each other at any time of day or night, but particularly useful during this period of social isolation. And to reinforce that, we've seen a dramatic rise in the usage of the video calling functionality on Smart Living Solutions. So we're able to see the month over month between February and March growth for one of our customers, it was 192% the increase in apartment to apartment calling. Across all of our customers, we've seen 164% increase. And this is off a pretty big base. We've got 250 smart living solution deployments throughout the UK. Roughly there's 40 apartments in, in a block. So you're talking about circa 10,000 or so elderly and vulnerable people who have a better living experience as a result of their housing provider installing smart living solutions. And if you have smart living solutions and you're not comfortable with your residents or, or you're not comfortable that your residents fully understand how all the features can be used, then these training videos, which we've just shown you one of and we will show you a couple more of, are, are on your Apello Knowledge Hub. And if you don't already use that, then contact us and we'll explain to you where to find it and how to use it because there's loads of really easy, simple to understand demonstrations of some of the, the functionality. So as I said, very significant increase in utilization and that comes from both the room unit to room units, which are hardwired and permanently mounted because they need to comply with the British standards and we, we want to make sure that no resident would ever forget where they, where they left their room units. But we're also aware 
that the convenience of being able to access some of the functionality of smart living solutions from a bed or from a sofa is as of enormous boom because it's got video door entry access in there it, it's wonderful for residents to be able to let their carer in from their bed or from their from their lounge the same clearly not now but back when we're in more normal times when friends and family are visiting so we've built the Apello app and that supports this away from the away from the room unit access to the functionality of smart living solutions and we'll give you a, a very quick example of just what that looks like in this next video again this is very short just uh, 40 50 seconds or so and intended as a how-to so we've got our resident here with their standard smart uh, smart tablet so it's not an apello provided device it is their own device they've loaded the apello app onto it and then from the apello app they can select an apartment that they want to call within their within their block but they can do it from the convenience of the lounge the communal lounge they can do it from the convenience of their own lounge or they can do it from their bed should they so wish and that could be to another apartment or that could be to the house manager or, or on-site member of staff to be able to give them a, a, a sense of what status the resident is in whether they need help whether they need support uh, it's a really really useful tool now when we talk about providing insights into the performance of the or the living environment of residents I'm, I'm really proud to say that we've been able to help at least 130 and we, we only know of 130 but that doesn't mean there haven't been a lot more housing managers who've been able to maintain video communication with their residents even though the housing managers have had to work from home and their home not being on site so they've been able to have daily check-ins and and frequent video interactions with their residents through the apello app from a remote location so that's a really tremendous boon if you if you think about what we're trying to provide as a Pello, but also as a society, which is a more inclusive, more engaging environment for the elderly and vulnerable to live in, to know that their house manager or whatever language you, you use within your organization is able to contact their, their resident from off site becomes a powerful tool. Again, with this feature and any other feature, if you would like to get more details then do contact us after the presentation now we've just put a polling question up so we'd like to get your sense of whether your telecare services have supported during coronavirus and whether or not you use video in any way to be able to help with that experience uh, I can see a number of you have voted. We're going to continue with the with the slides while we get those polling results in, and we'll talk a little bit about the uh, the outputs of those. It's interesting to see that there is a you know we know there's a good mix of people on this call who've deployed smart living solutions, but also a number who haven't. And it'll be interesting to get some insights into those stats at the end of this in terms of which of those cohorts was the ones that had been better able to use their telecare system to provide great results. Uh, Ian, do you wanna close it there? Oh, I can see you have closed it, cool. Uh, and that's sharing the results. So on the whole, 40% of people were who are on the call have been able to, or, the, or those who um, completed the poll anyway, have used video within their developments some have only used it for door entry when we move on and you can close if it hasn't closed automatically you can close that icon on your on your screen now 
I, I mentioned before about getting an update into the well-being of residents and one of the nice features of smart living solutions that we've had even more positive feedback about than usual during coronavirus has been the I'm okay feature. Uh, you can see that on the left hand side halfway down the icons there's an I'm okay, I'm not okay and we're just going to give you a very simple demonstration of the feature because it makes a difference to just how simple it is for housing managers and housing providers to get that insight. So let's just look at the real example here. So as you can see on the, on the screen, and I should say at this stage, there are a variety of different user interfaces that we've designed for our housing providers. We have, this is our most familiar and most standard, but we have also customized them for particular housing providers. Uh, it can either use their color, their logos, or a link across the top to their own websites. The other thing that's worth saying about the I'm okay functionality is different housing providers have chosen to have this in different formats. Some have asked that it's set for I'm not okay, and the resident chooses to mark it that they are, or some have, I'm okay, and the resident choose to mark it, I'm not okay. We're absolutely agnostic on that. It is entirely up to our housing provider customers to decide which of those versions they prefer. One of the beauties of Smart Living Solutions is that it is customizable, and it does give you a great deal of insight. In terms of insight, a good example of that are the next couple of things, which are, are, are largely going to be the last two I'll talk about before we hand over to questions. The first of the, the insights is Apello HQ. So Apello HQ is the dashboard of insights that are provided from within the Smart Living Solutions system. So this will tell you things like, how many residents are I'm okay, how much video apartment to apartment traffic is there, are any particular apartments perhaps overusing that feature that might indicate they are becoming a nuisance caller to other residents. It, it provides insights into whether devices are connected, it provides insights into whether pendants are low battery. Things which you don't get any sort of visibility of with a traditional analog system, Smart Living Solutions through the Apello HQ app provides all of that insight to help prioritize time, particularly the I'm okay and the low battery on pendants or the device not operating. Those are real insights that housing managers can use to prioritize their time. Another data point which can be really powerful is the Apello SBR, which stands for Single Best Record. This is the equivalent of HQ, but for our monitoring service. So this provides remote insight into the monitoring activity that's taken, and by which I mean the telecare monitoring activity. So calls by residents into the monitoring center. It's, uh, it's also, a real boon in terms of being able to housing managers being able to update in real time resident data so if somebody's next of kin changes if a contact detail changes if their medical condition changes the housing manager can automatically update that through the Apello SBR app and as a result of that it means the monitoring center always has the very latest data a really, really important point of reassurance in these COVID times, but useful at any time of, of, of year. The last thing I'll mention just quickly before we open for questions is that one of the other features of Smart Living Solutions, which is, which is helpful during lockdown, is the remote software maintenance capability. Because Smart Living Solutions is a fully digital system, that means you can remotely diagnose and remotely assess the health 
of the system and occasionally do resets if required without the customer and, and resident needing to have any involvement. That clearly reduces the number of times that an engineer might need to come to site and gives a higher level of confidence that the system is up and working under normal circumstances and there when it's needed. It all helps improve the resident safety that's such a core feature of smart living solutions. So those are the, those are the main points we wanted to cover. We're open for, for questions and it would be great to know whether you think coronavirus will change your view of telecare requirements for the future. Um, you know, I, I think we know the answer to this, but it's always good to have real customers provide their insights. Uh, not surprisingly, we'd imagined this would be heavily weighted to the yeses and, and, and quite clearly it is. Good, that provides re interesting reassurance for us that our, that our thinking is valid. What we're also really interested in is what have you learned from this experience that you think digital telecare can help provide solutions for in the future? We're particularly conscious that there is a very likely, a strong likelihood that there will be a uh, potentially a second and maybe even a third wave of either this coronavirus or, or future viruses and future pandemics. So it, it's our aim to make sure that as many of the features that have been found useful during this pandemic are ready and available to our, to our customers and to their residents in the future. That, that's been the, uh, the insights we wanted to share with you. We're now open up for questions. So you close the polling icon if you haven't done already. I will stop sharing and we're ready to take questions. I know Ian, you've been moderating those. So what have we had in so far? Well, the first question, Tim, is very much related to coronavirus and it is, will coronavirus impact the types of services that we at Apello develop over the, in the future? Uh, well, definitely it will. Uh, and I think there's a, there's a few things that have become really apparent for, from us that, the more remote working and remote access capabilities we build into smart living solutions, the more powerful and, and useful it becomes. We'd already been working on some cloud capabilities and, and Carl, I'll pass over to you in a second or two to describe about what those do. Uh, we'd, we'd been working for a while on cloud capabilities to enable more remote access and, and we will give a lot more thought and take a lot more feedback from our customers about what else we should build that makes the video interaction, the remote working and the social engagement as powerful and more powerful going forward. So Carl, thoughts from you? Oh, you might wanna come off mute, schoolboy error. It's as if we've never done one of these before. <laughs> Apologies. Um, the cloud uh, development that we're doing allows schemes to talk to each other as if they're on the same virtual network. So we're creating an environment for B2B customers to create a complete network of their, of their residents that they, they provide services to. So this will provide social calling across site to site, including video, um, and allow additional satellite um, users that may use a dispersed alarm to also connect into that network and share that social environment. The cloud will also support the uh, ability of a, of a scheme manager or a court manager to be able to control um, a number of different sites or a site that is remote from where they currently are. So that is take all of the alarm events, all of the video events and all of the social events from those sites also. Um, so the cloud's going to control all of that, that environment. Um, there are other things that will come on later in terms of being able to send multimedia messaging across multiple sites. But in the, in the, in the first instance, it's, the, it's, it's targeting those social activities. Great stuff. Thank you. Ian, next question. Next question is, 
are video connections to away from site going to be enabled and is that something in development so that people working from home can um, can video into a development that that's very much part of what um, Carl was just referring to so yes absolutely we've we've enabled it through the Apello app and we'll also be looking to enable it more widely through the cloud capability that Carl just described so that's definitely a feature that exists at the moment but will get richer and more available as time goes on and following that it's um can gp services and other healthcare services be provided through the living hub uh, so that's a really good question and we have tested babylon health livy doctor link and uh one other major gp app which i can't just remember off the top of my head and all of them work really well work really nicely so yes there's one of the reasons for choosing an android based room unit as part of the wider smart living solution system is because of its ability to be able to host applications and there's uh, the ones i just mentioned all work really well off smart living solutions the next question is can calls from residents be routed to mobile phones um carl do you want to say what we're what we're doing in that space yeah so um there's two two answers to that um if you use if you use alarm events to mobile phones um, that's part of the cloud development work so um, a local off-site type functionality will be deployed hopefully at the end of, by the end of quarter one um, so that's so that call managers can take calls when they're you know at a close distance but remote from the from the scheme the the application the mirror application will be scaled down to smartphones also so residents can use that application and take door entry calls or social calls or create alarm events from a smartphone connected to their living hub. Very good. Ian, any more questions? There's, there's quite a lot of questions, Tim. Um, and the right. next one, the next one is probably for me anyway, actually. So the next question is, um, do we have easy to follow marketing materials um, for the downloading of the app, but um, with other SLS um, features as well? So the answer to that is that we do, uh, we have created an Apello knowledge base. This contains some of the videos that we've seen today, but a whole host of other materials in terms of printable guides and all, all sorts of brochures and user guides. Um, so we're, we're, we have a lot of materials and we're always happy to work with customers to create stuff which, um, which supports them and their residents. Um, the next question is, can the I'm OK time period be amended? Great stuff. Carl, do you want to say something on the flexibility of doing that? Yeah, so uh, on the user interface in Apollo HQ, there is a configuration element. So the court managers or house managers can adjust the period of, of when they're on duty and can you have a 24 hour period, obviously, for the day and you can set when you want I'm OK to function within that period. Great. Next question is, can you access online services via the tablet, e.g. a housing app? Most definitely. So uh, one of the things that Smart Living Solutions provides is the ability to customise the user interface, that, that home screen, as it were, and to include a link directly into housing providers' own websites so that you can report repairs, so that you can raise faults or, uh, or, or be aware of other social activities, for example, that are happening on the site. Mark, I know you've been giving thought to future services that we might offer from the, uh, you know, in, in terms of social and uh links into websites for housing providers do you want to provide a few thoughts on that yeah sure i mean we've been looking at things like you know skype 
and, and standard type IP um, communications, as well as looking at housing providers portals. So if, if a customer wants to be able to log on to a portal to report a fault, if they want to be able to get information from the housing provider, we should be able to give them really easy, straightforward access to all of the services directly through the system. Very good. Ian, more questions? Yeah, we, we're about halfway through the quest questions at the moment. Um, right. So interesting one. Can you still install and keep social distancing? Yes, absolutely. So the, there are broadly two parts to the installation. Um, so when we deploy Smart Living Solutions throughout a, throughout a scheme, mm. Smart Living Solutions is a lot more than just the room unit. It, it is the room unit, but it's also high speed cabling throughout the building. It's a server architecture. It's a universal power, an uninterrupted power supply. It's a decked, decked handset and all the decked receivers. It's a pendant network. So there's quite a lot of work that takes place behind the scenes and well away from residents or, or house managers. When we attend the apartments, we would do that in an entirely socially distanced and importantly, hygienically controlled environment. So we only need access to the hallway or wherever it is that the, the room unit is gonna be installed and potentially the bathroom if the, a pull cord or, or otherwise is going to be there. We don't need the resident to be present. They could be in the guest suite, they could be in their bedroom, they could be in another room. Our, uh, our technicians who do the deployment, who do the installation, will be wearing PPE, will have clinical wipes for any surfaces they touch, will have appropriate gloves, and, and of course they will leave everything wiped down and sterile after having used it. So yeah, absolutely. And Mark, I know you have been working with your deployments team to make sure that there's a, there's a method statement and uh, a set of working practices that really support the entire resident experience being one that's comfortable and, um, and supported. Is there anything else you wanted to add? Uh, I guess the last piece is, you're quite right, having the method statement, having everything written down and then training for the team as well so they understand the correct use of the PPE, the correct use of sterilisation equipment and how the, 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 the right way to, to approach a premises, the right way to, to keep the social distancing and the, and the right way to leave once they've completed their work. Great. Okay, next question, Ian. Can other video calling apps, e.g. Skype, be downloaded onto the room unit? Yes, that's a very simple one. The answer is yes. And following that is, what are the timescales for the development of the cloud? Great question. Why don't I hand over to my <laughs> CTO? Because I ask him the same question quite frequently. So, Carl, so do I. What is the development timescale for the cloud application? Well, thanks for the question. Um, we we had a roadmap. <laughs> we had a roadmap to deliver the cloud services that that um, had uh, specific priorities within it, um, and that was aimed at the end of quarter one. We, because of the, the COVID nineteen issue, we have changed some of those priorities um, to aid with home working. So some of the functionality will be released by the end of quarter one, some of it into quarter two. So hopefully that's... Well, quarter, quarter one was, uh, was last month. Well, um, there are some, some functionality ready to be, to, to, to roll out. Um, so we are, we have delivered on some of it, but we haven't put it in production. Yeah. And to be fair, some of the back office applications we use right now are from the cloud platform. Yeah. yeah. So we have, um, we monitor SIP events. So these are events that are based around digital devices and the cloud is monitoring those and reporting, reporting exceptional activities such as failures um, back, to, back to our technical staff and back to our customers. And that is a cloud piece of functionality. So the cloud is developing all the time. But some of the social interaction stuff will slip slightly in favor of supporting COVID-19 requirements. Yeah. 
I think the thing the thing that will be of most benefit to to our customers and to their customers will be the remote access elements and the um, apart block A calling block B and block A calling off site completely. The, the, the time frame for those you think is over the course of the next eight weeks or so? Yeah, eight, eight to ten weeks, yeah. Eight to ten weeks, okay. There you go, <laughs> people, you heard it first and uh, and this is all recorded, so we'll be using this in one-to-ones later on. Uh, next question, please, Ian. So we have two questions left, so if, if people do have questions, please remember to use the Q&A at the bottom of the screen. Um, and there's another one just come in. So we have three questions. So can you tackle entry to a building contactlessly, ensuring that residents are kept safe? Yes. So we've got, do you want to talk about the work? Well, actually, let, let me just use, I'll set this up first of all, because this is something that is a really, really good example of how smart living solutions can be adapted to a particular requirement. So Gary Clark, who's our product development manager, uh, works in Carl's team, approached me a little while ago to say, um, oh, we've got a brilliant new thing which we're testing, facial recognition for door panels. And I, I, I sort of shook my head thinking, no, 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 no. You're just, you're just chasing the latest dream here. That's just the latest bit of technology to focus on things that will make a difference. And he said, no, Tim, you're missing the point. The point is, what do we get so many frustrated residents telling us that they wish we could improve? The need to remember their fob, the frustrations when they get locked out because they've forgotten their fob, the, res the house manager's frustrations at having to let residents in who've forgotten their access code, who've forgotten to take their fob with them. And so actually, a, a great example of using technology but using it purely because it's a benefit rather than because it's the latest thing is facial recognition so that's an example of how you can do contactless door entry in in a real world and carl i think we've actually got that tested and working is that right yeah correct yeah we have that working reliably as well um so that's that's some functionality that, that people can share we've also um, had working successfully um, some near field communication releases for doors. So uh, wheelchair users uh, with a fob on their on their wheelchair activating a loop um, in the door entry system, allowing access that way. So that's um, that's a use case that's actually out there and, and in in production. Great stuff, Ian. So so two questions remaining. The next one is. How successfully has the monitoring services been whilst home working? Well, now this is this has been a very very interesting case study for us. If you'd have asked me in January or February of this year, even whether we had any plans for introducing home working for monitoring for telecare monitoring, I, I would have said it's on our roadmap but it's definitely not something for this year. It's something we're exploring for future years. Um, and then end of February and, and early March, suddenly it became imperative that we enabled our operators to be able to work from home if they had the requirement to do so. Clearly, we don't want people to be working from home if they're sick, but if they're socially isolating and able to work, then we wanted that to be able to, to be possible. So during uh, the very early part of March, we procured 300 laptops and second screens, and we rolled those out during, during mid-March. And by the end of March, we had every operator with the ability to work from home. Now, the majority are still working from our monitoring centers because, of course, we've got, we've got full, diverse, connectivity coming in we've got UPS we've got generators so we've got a lot more resilience in the sites than people have individually in their homes but we've been very very impressed with the performance from home and, and one of the beautiful things about CareNet the Mont telecare monitoring platform that Carl and his team have built in 
connection with a, a large contact center provider is that it gives us really good diagnostics and really good data points on the performance of the operators in their individual environment. So we can see what their performance looks like at home and compare it to their performance in the office. And the average handling time is almost identical. The wrap up, i.e. making the notes takes slightly longer. Uh, although we provided a second screen for everybody who's working from home, it's, a, uh, it's, it's effectively like a 15 inch iPad. So it's a, uh, it, it's a good second screen, but it's, you know, it's not necessarily as good as having a 22 inch screen next to you that, you, that we have in their desktop environment. So, so making the notes takes a little bit longer, but overall performance has held up really, really well. And we've run certain shifts with almost all of our operators working from home. We run the majority of shifts with probably two thirds in the office, one third from home. We've got out of the roughly 300 or so telecare monitoring operators, about 70 of them are working from home until further notice because they have either underlying conditions themselves or they look after or live with people who have underlying conditions so we've we've got a long enough period of data during this month of april to be able to determine the performance and we're we're very very pleased really really um resilient and creates a lot of opportunity for us we think to be able to offer even more flexible and resilient services for our customers in the future. Uh, Ian, no, next question, next couple of questions, whatever we're left with. Yeah, so the last question is, um, if the residents have the Apello app on their mobile device, what is to stop them using the system when they are away from the apartment? Ah, uh -huh. good question. So Carl, do you want to share thoughts on that? Um, okay, so uh, there is nothing actually to stop them using the uh, the app when they're away from their apartment. The only prerequisite is that they would need um, enough data and, um, and connectivity to be able to do that. So the the mirror app will operate away from from the from the apartment and will raise an emergency call when the emergency call appears at the monitoring centre. It does come with uh, information relating to location. So we do get that information and we do get voice and we, we can converse with that, that individual. Um, the individual can also take door entry calls um, on their device remotely from their apartment should somebody come to the front door. So that is an added benefit, but it does rely on that service user using data from their mobile network. Very good. Tim, I do have what I do have one last question. Sorry. Okay, that's good. Um, so the question is: naturally, the system is an increase in technology compared to current systems. So, how do you support in the adoption of this technology with residents? Uh, really, really good question. And there are three parts to that. So the first is user-centric design. So a lot of the functionality was designed in conjunction with the people who were going to use it through focus groups and so on. Uh, as you've seen from some of the demonstrations, there are very simple, easy to use features that are just at the touch of a button and they're self-explanatory. So address book, apartment number, that's a very, very simple way of erasing, raising an, a, a video call to another resident. Uh, I'm okay, I'm not okay. A very simple way of identifying to your house manager whether or not you're feeling well. So the first thing is all about user-centric design. The second thing is all about the training that we provide both while we're on site and, and after the event with refresher training. And then the third thing is the availability of additional training collateral so these very short how-to videos that you've been seeing they weren't designed for this webinar they were designed for residents and they've been around for for how long Ian best part of a year or so yeah at least a year yeah 
so th they are a very very simple guide for a house manager to use to make sure they're comfortable with it uh, uh, or a house manager to use with a resident to make sure the resident is comfortable with it there is a there is a another part that we play in this which is we provide uh, or, or can provide depending on whether the housing provider requests it we can provide usage data for i mean we could provide it down to residents but but we don't do that this is about the usage data of schemes developments blocks whatever you whatever language you use so we're able to provide a housing um a, a housing provider with the details of which of their 1 10 20 150 blocks in their portfolio are the low users the high users and so that they can do training for those people who perhaps are a, a little lower user than others now none of this is sensitive customer data we're not recording conversations we're not recording images all we're doing is showing utilization of the features so there's there's no gdpr implications of any of this this is just about utilization and it's through that visibility that we are able to underpin anybody who seems to be not using the features as much as they might to have a better level of visibility of how to use them looks like we've got no further questions unless you can see anything ian no no more questions great so it, it looked like uh, for those of you that responded to the poll which was roughly half of those people i think who were on the call uh looked like you found this useful so really really glad if there's anything you want to follow up on then drop me a line at tim.barclay at apello.co.uk or you've got Ian, Ian's contact details through the registration for this. If you'd like, we're running another one of these exactly the same next Thursday. So if you think there are other colleagues in your organizations who would find this useful, please encourage them to join. If there's other content you would find that would be helpful, please just get in touch. As I say, address again was tim.barclay at apello.co.uk. Thank you very much for taking the time. We're glad you found it useful and we look forward to, to helping you in any way we can in the future. Just let us know what would be of value. Thanks a lot. Thank you.